How are you? I am Dr. Fernando Lemos, a coloproctologist from Rio Grande do Sul, specializing in diseases of the intestine, rectum, and anus. And in this video, I want to talk about apple cider vinegar. Why am I talking about this video? I'm frequently approached by numerous individuals who are curious to know my thoughts and opinions on apple cider vinegar. I am not more qualified than anyone else. I do not consider myself in that way, but I possess something that many colleagues who are discussing health-related topics on social media do not possess or have at their disposal. I am an incredibly practical doctor because I handle patients, perform surgeries, and conduct examinations on a daily basis as part of my professional duties. There are many unqualified individuals on social media talking about the digestive field. There are some doctors who are just theoretical, they read books, listen to something from conferences, and don't have that feeling. To observe what the patient is conveying, what he is genuinely experiencing. And we have a lot of that in our medical practice here in Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. And our team, the team that works with me, is a highly experienced team in providing practical patient care. And I believe that this is what lends credibility to the gut planet for individuals to search for our point of view. The first thing I want to say is the following. I don't want to keep repeating from the countless videos that are here that I watched two or three videos that were sent to me. I saw that people were saying the same things. I think maybe one heard from the other and repeated. I don't want to keep repeating so many things about apple cider vinegar. I want to give my opinion on apple cider vinegar and listen until the end because at the end I will give a tip. How to utilize individuals who should not utilize and the genuine kind of apple cider vinegar that possesses the anticipated advantageous impacts for health and wellness. Firstly, what is apple cider vinegar? It is simply fermented juice extracted from apples. That is it. It is a fermentation of apple juice. You can utilize vinegar made from any kind of fruit you desire. In reality, the most well known of these fruits is actually apple cider vinegar. Let's talk about the benefits. Here we go. It has no preservatives, no calories, it does not make you gain weight, it has no sodium, which causes bloating and increases blood pressure. So it is like, for instance, in terms of calorie increase, it is zero. And what are the advantages of apple cider vinegar, if any? Is he as extraordinary as everyone is talking about? No, nothing, in fact, in the field of medicine is miraculous. Everything is a combination of various factors and situations that will bring numerous benefits. However, if you inquire from me, is apple cider vinegar beneficial for health? Yes, it is indeed beneficial for health, without a doubt. What are the key advantages and benefits of apple cider vinegar that I could mention and highlight to you during our conversation? If you watch videos on social media, you will see that apple cider vinegar, excuse my joke, they say it is even good for a broken heart. But in reality, it's not quite, quite, quite like that. In fact, apple cider vinegar, its main benefits, well studied in multicenter studies, means that studies are conducted in a way that the patients using the substance do not know what they are using, and those not using it do not know if it is really the substance or a placebo. Studies in reputable centers in the US, North America, Europe, and Japan focus more on the part of apple cider vinegar. The primary benefits are threefold in terms of high blood pressure, which is actually a condition that more and more people are experiencing, especially due to the prevalence of hypertension in our environment in relation to obesity and in relation to diabetes. These three advantages represent the unanimous agreement on a global scale when it comes to the benefits of apple cider vinegar. One of the initial aspects to be examined was related to diabetes. Type two diabetes, referring to patients who develop diabetes over the course of their lifetime, why? Because apple cider vinegar, it enhances something known as cellular sensitivity to insulin. What does insulin do? It is an enzyme produced by the pancreas that pushes sugar into the cell and also sometimes deposits sugar in the muscle, preventing sugar from circulating in the bloodstream. So blood sugar levels will decrease in people who consume apple cider vinegar because it facilitates the action of insulin to move this sugar into the cell. 
By doing this, it helps prevent glycemic spikes. These spikes occur when you eat a lot of sweets, causing a spike in glucose levels to soar. And consequently, the pancreas has to work very intensely and give insulin spikes. And we know that insulin spikes are things that can eventually lead to pancreatic failure and making you become a diabetic. And steel and apple cider vinegar prevent this. And another detail, when you experience high insulin peaks, insulinemia, which steel and apple cider vinegar aid in preventing, that also provides assistance in other aspects indirectly. To amplify weight, to amplify lipogenesis, which is the process of augmenting the production of fat cells in the body. So it is all a set, correct? Refraining from consuming apple cider vinegar can exacerbate diabetes and facilitate weight gain, making it easier for individuals to put on extra pounds. And people ask me, doctor, I don't have diabetes, but I have a family predisposition, or my blood sugar is always above 100, between 100 and 126. Will apple cider vinegar help me? Absolutely. It is not only utilized by individuals with diabetes, but it also helps in lowering your fasting blood glucose level, which is the measurement of your actual circulating blood glucose in the body. Another interesting thing regarding obesity is that it reduces satiety. It reduces satiety, decreases that intense desire you have to eat compulsively. This is something that has already been studied and it helps with that. And it also increases metabolism. There is a well-known American study that was investigating the relationship between apple cider vinegar and diabetes and obesity, and they observed the following. People who did not change their lifestyle at all, continued eating what they were eating, continued without doing any physical activity, just their daily activities, who consumed apple cider vinegar for 30 or 40 days, I'm not mistaken whether it was 30 or 40 days, lost 2 to 3 kilograms in a month without changing anything, just by consuming apple cider vinegar. And individuals who ingested apple cider vinegar and also participated in physical activity such as walking, aerobic exercise, dancing or going to the gym were able to lose a maximum of 8 pounds in a period of one month by employing this combination. That's why I said it's not a miracle substance, something must be associated with it. Take care of your diet, go for a walk and add him to it, then yes, the effect will be to create synergy, it will be added up with the beneficial effects of these other situations. Another very important thing is that in these studies, it was observed that circulating blood glucose decreased by about 40% in the group of people who consumed this apple cider vinegar. And this is a value that I would say, folks, is something excellent for individuals who are diabetic and individuals who have a pre-diabetic condition with slightly elevated glucose levels. Another consensus is about high blood pressure, hypertension. Maybe 50-60% of the population watching me in this video on our Planet Intestine channel has high blood pressure. Why does apple cider vinegar aid in this? Let's proceed. In previous times, consider it, our predecessor's diet was not as processed, with such a large number of industrialized, pre-packaged items with numerous preservatives, and there was a thoroughly researched proportion referenced in different articles of sodium, sodium being salt and potassium being one part sodium to one part potassium, that proportion one to one. Are you aware of the current state of our diet? It is composed of approximately four to five grams of sodium and around one gram of potassium per day. What does sodium do? Sodium causes swelling. Sodium retains fluid in the extracellular space outside the cell and thus helps increase blood pressure in addition to edema and swelling. Salt is an enemy of blood pressure and sodium means salt. It is the main component of salt, which is NaCl, which is sodium chloride. It is sodium. And when you consume apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar is packed with a high amount of potassium. And you have the option to decrease and return this ratio instead of 4 to 5 to 1 in order to return to a ratio of 1 to 1 or at the maximum 2 of sodium to 1 of potassium. And that is all. Merely by performing that action, you will have the capacity to aid support in diminishing your levels of expression. Obviously, you have to take care of your diet, exercise and lose weight. There are several factors. Just using apple cider vinegar alone won't bring your blood pressure back to normal if you have high and severe hypertension. 
Another well-studied aspect of apple cider vinegar is that it contains a soluble fiber known as pectin that has the ability to dissolve in water. This soluble fiber aids in intestinal function, carrying, stripping and removing cholesterol and triglycerides. Additionally, it helps reduce LDL and cholesterol levels, making it beneficial for overall heart health. And that is a very important thing to help prevent blockages in the coronary arteries, carotid arteries, preventing heart attacks, preventing long-term strokes. Facts about apple cider vinegar. To summarize, what are the well-studied and well-known benefits of apple cider vinegar? To manage blood pressure, to manage diabetes, or to reduce your circulating blood sugar levels. And in order to offer support for weight loss and combat obesity, that is certainly a commendable effort. But Dr. Fernando, I heard that this week. I read and heard that apple cider vinegar is extremely beneficial for skin, extremely beneficial for hair, extremely beneficial for sleep. I would like to inform you that these additional benefits are all isolated fragments of information, each pertaining to a specific aspect or feature. There are no substantial controlled studies, long-term studies demonstrating unequivocal benefits on the skin that have been scientifically proven. In hair and in sleep, you can tell me or you mean, but for me it was good for the skin. These are isolated cases. In the field of medicine, where we work with a medicine called evidence-based medicine, I can only speak about what has been extensively studied over the years, in many centers, and not just based on my own experience. I have to combine my experience with these multi-center studies in order to provide you with reliable information. The issue with numerous social media videos is that they state one thing, or state a clinical case, an isolated case, or a group of people, and they promptly present it as if it were a consensus for all. And actually, it is not like that. So be extremely cautious with benefits for everything. As if it was something miraculous, something that fell from the heavens. No, that's not it. Let's proceed. What is the recommended method of taking apple cider vinegar and when is the best time of day to take it for optimal results? In my professional advice, I would recommend using one to two tablespoons, which should be diluted in around 150 to 200 milliliters of water for the best outcome. Start those who are not used to using apple cider vinegar with a tablespoon in 150 milliliters of water. After a period of one to one and a half months of use, you have the option to increase the dosage to two tablespoons mixed with 200 milliliters of water and use it twice a day. I don't suggest you use it three times a day as many are saying. Another matter that I am completely opposed to. It is imperative not to utilize apple cider vinegar under any circumstances. Vinegar is acetic acid in the morning on an empty stomach. This is propagated by almost everyone who talks about the use of apple cider vinegar. Watch, those who haven't watched my video that I wrote, avoid drinking lemon water in the morning on an empty stomach, a video that has reached over 2 million views on YouTube in just two weeks. Observe there, the explanation remains unchanged. Until it is absorbed in the stomach, in the duodenum, its acid will cause harm to the esophagus and the stomach. So, what time do I recommend utilizing apple cider vinegar at this dosage? I suggest utilizing it at 11 a.m., which is approximately one hour before your lunchtime. Additionally, I recommend utilizing it at 5 p.m., which is one to two hours before your last main meal of the day. Your last main meal should be between 7 and 8 p.m., right? Please ensure to follow this timing schedule for optimal results and effectiveness. Now let's discuss a rarely mentioned topic. In what situations should apple cider vinegar not be used? Which people need to be cautious in its use? By saying that I'm already stating it's not miraculous for all, wouldn't that be beneficial, amazing for all? Be extra cautious with these groups I'm going to discuss. Firstly, patients with kidney problems, nephropaths, patients undergoing hemodialysis, or patients who have their creatinine and urea levels above the threshold, and your EGFR, your creatinine clearance, which nephrologists always request, that is slightly inaccurate. You must take care. If you have kidney issues, do not utilize. Why? I did not inform you all that apple cider vinegar, it is. 
Abundant in potassium, individuals with kidney problems, particularly those with chronic kidney issues, might encounter challenges in eliminating potassium. And if you begin to consume potassium in a kidney that is unable to eliminate potassium, hyperkalemia will occur, indicating that potassium levels will increase and may potentially result in cardiac arrest, which is a highly serious issue caused by elevated potassium. So, individuals with kidney problems communicate with your doctor. Another detail, individuals with serious esophagus and stomach problems, second or third degree esophagitis, intense gastritis, ulcers or erosions should refrain from consuming apple cider vinegar. If using never in the morning on an empty stomach due to aforementioned reasons explained earlier in this context. Third, people who take medications for neurological conditions, epilepsy or narcolepsy, because we know that apple cider vinegar, like any other type of vinaigrette, even if it has a low alcohol content, contains a small amount of alcohol and this can interact with these neurological medications and affect the outcome, either increasing or decreasing the effectiveness of your medication. We are cognizant of a patient, even during the period when I was employed at a teaching hospital in Porto Alegre, who experienced a worsening of his epileptic seizures due to the use of apple cider vinegar, a situation that I personally witnessed and found concerning. In 2005, that really stuck with me. I never forgot about it. Another detail is that people have serious dental problems. People who have issues with the enamel of their teeth, be careful because acetic acid removes tooth enamel. That is the reason why I never recommend utilizing pure apple cider vinegar. It always has to be mixed and diluted in water in order to achieve the desired results. And to conclude, which apple cider vinegar should be consumed? It can be the one from the market, the one that is sold in any market, any store. This is the small white one, which is transparent. Well, power can be applied, but the benefits will not be as significant or noticeable. To ensure optimal quality, it is recommended that apple cider vinegar has an acid concentration ranging from 4 to 6%. That is the information that is written on the label. It is the first detail. The second detail is that it cannot be filtered or pasteurized. Pasteurized is that substance that is done a lot with milk, which raises the temperature way up high and then lowers it again. This necessitates a multitude of benefits, vitamins and minerals obtained from the use of apple cider vinegar. And it is an absolute necessity for it to be organic. In actuality, organic, unfiltered, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar does not have a transparent appearance. It's cloudy, maybe a little brownish for you to understand how it is. And if you look at the bottom of the bottle, there will even be a little bit of residue. People think that being quite transparent is the best, it's the cutest. Many times it's not this here. But that's not something you find in a regular market. These natural markets sell natural products, including apple cider vinegar with the acidity level I mentioned. Unfiltered, it's organic. I invite you to subscribe to our channel, Palliative Care Intestine. Click on subscribe there, then a bell icon will appear. If you want to click on it, you will be notified when we have new videos. Occasionally, I am unable to make videos frequently. Due to my heavy workload that extends late into the night, our operations also run late, resulting in sporadic video releases at times. So you get first hand when we make these videos, if you want and can also give us an okay, a like and share. This is all crucial and essential for us to keep on doing the gut planet. As I always say, we have no goal, aim or intention of selling any products or medications whatsoever. I am not sponsored by any pharmaceutical industry. My objective here is solely to provide you with serious information as if it were a personal goal outside of my regular activities. However, I express my gratitude to the substantial number of viewers, the dedicated supporters of our gut plan on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Looking forward to the next video.